Welcome to My Savior Lives Northland. This program offers you the opportunity to participate in a service of worship led by local pastors and members of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. MSL Northland is locally produced with a message for the world. Welcome to My Savior Lives Northland. My name is Pastor Peppercorn, and I am pastor here at Faith Lutheran Church in Silver Bay, Minnesota. Today's service is being recorded here at Faith Lutheran in Silver Bay. You can also watch this service on Vimeo at MSL Northland, on YouTube, on Public Access in Duluth, or on our website, mslnorthland.com. We'll be right back after this hymn. the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean, we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. 
Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, so govern our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that ever mindful of your glorious return, we may persevere in both faith and holiness of living. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament lesson for the last Sunday of the church here is from Isaiah chapter 51. Give attention to me, my people, and give ear to me, my nation. For a law will go out from me, and I will set my justice for a light to the peoples. My righteousness draws near, my salvation has gone out, and my arms will judge the peoples. The coastlands hope for me, and for my arm they wait. Lift up your eyes to the heavens, and look at the earth beneath. For the heavens vanish like smoke. The earth will wear out like a garment, and they who dwell in it will die in like manner. But my salvation will be forever, and my righteousness will never be dismayed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is written in Jude. But you, beloved, build yourselves up in your most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ that leads to eternal life. And have mercy on those who doubt. Save others by snatching them out of the fire. Do others show mercy with fear, hating even the garment stained by the flesh. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy, to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel, according to St. Mark, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, In those days, after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts out its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But concerning that day or that hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard, keep awake. For you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his servants in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to stay awake. Therefore stay awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening or at midnight, or when the cock crows, or in the morning, lest he come suddenly and find you asleep. And what I say to you, I say to all, say, Awake. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. 
Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus says, Heaven and earth will pass away. He's talking about all of creation, this world and everything in it. Everything will perish. You and I may be alive when Jesus returns, but all previous generations will have died. The dead will rise but this world will not. Consider the reaction we have to the stuff that doesn't de decay really quickly, like plastic. We don't really know what to do except use it again and again and again. It's unnatural. We can try to destroy it, but if it's left alone, it doesn't really change. It's very unnatural. It feels wrong. We recoil from it. For nothing in this creation is truly permanent. Anything that seems so is generally unnatural, perverse, and wrong. And we don't react well to stuff passing away. The idea of decay scares us, drives us to seek escape, or just plain anger. How well do you receive the news these days? Does it make you disgusted, despair, just a bit, 
or get angry? Beware of following false hopes in the strength of mankind. Beware of the nagging, angry humor that conceals your fear. It's called sarcasm and cynicism. It's not really funny. It's your fearful heart trying to hide under humor. The things of this world, all of it, they pass away. They perish. What the world can't figure out is why. They can't know apart from Holy Scripture. For only Scripture reveals that death has entered this world through sin. Everything that's of or from this world is subject to, is enslaved to sin. From the grass to the stars above. Scripture reveals this because Scripture comes from the source of life, not death. Scripture can't be wrong because its author is the Lord God, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So the truth in re revealed in Scripture won't perish. It can't perish because the speaker, the author, isn't subject to sin as this world is. Jesus' words won't pass away because he's the one who speaks them. It's not the words themselves, like some sort of magical incantation. It's the heart and life of the one who speaks. Now, Jesus is subjected and subjects himself to sin, but as both God and man. He did this voluntarily. He wanted to. Only in him has sin been paid for. Has the punishment been taken? Has the sentence of death been executed? Only in him has the payment been accepted as sufficient for all. Being accepted then, his death, sin is paid for. Death is dead and life then wins. Jesus is the only one to die, to rise from death, and who will never, ever die again. That makes him what's called infallible, unable to be wrong. His words are like none others because he has authority above all things in creation. It is written, Behold, with the clouds of heaven there came on one like the Son of Man, and he came to the Ancient of Days and was presented before him. And to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom one that shall not be destroyed. That was from Daniel chapter 7. We read from Mark, but in Luke's version of our reading from Holy Scripture, Jesus says, When these things begin to take place, straighten up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. He isn't referring to the tweeting of a chickadee or seeing comfort in a rainbow. He's actually referring to those, he's referring to creation groaning under sin of earthquakes, snowstorms, floods, hurricanes, famines, and more. He's referring to the, the stories of death and fear on the news, the lying false hopes of politicians and your favorite TV show. These are the cause for you to lift up your heads, to straighten up from your groaning in despair and cynicism. As the Lord also says, Lift up your eyes to the heavens and look at the earth beneath. For the heavens vanish like smoke. The earth will wear out like a garment, and they who dwell in it will die in like manner. But my salvation will be forever, and my righteousness will never be dismayed. The end of this world isn't a bad thing. I don't mean all things are pointless and let's just start over. No, we don't despair, but we do, we do look at things differently. We look at them differently than the world does. 
Jesus is coming, and it will be terrible. And yet he's coming to restore all things, to make things new, in fact. We are waiting for new heavens and new earth in which righteousness dwells. Even the terrible parts are meant as cleansing of that which is against life and against you. Hear the scriptures when he says this, But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved, and the earth and the works that are done on it will be exposed. Since all these things are thus to be dissolved, what sort of people ought you to be in lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hasting the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set on fire and dissolved, and the heavenly bodies will melt as they burn. But according to his promise, we are waiting for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Those terrible parts, well, they're still coming. And waiting through the passing decades and centuries is a trial for everyone. Even so, the Lord isn't slow in keeping his promise. As we wait while this world keeps passing away, the Lord hasn't left you comfortless. When you get cynical, anxious, and angry, pray. Place it at the wholesome feet of the Lord who died for you. Call on him when this perishing world threatens your hope your peace, your joy, your love, and your trust. Hear, sing, and discuss these words of Jesus. That's where your strength will be. The promises and warnings of our Lord God in all Scripture. For these words will endure. They come from the only risen and living God over all creation. In short, there's hope and it's only in Jesus Christ. Consider the trees as we come to the end of this year, as we come into December. The darkest, the shortest day is coming on December 21st. Spring or summer can't seem farther away. The trees are resting. There's no bud showing on them. But you know you'll see the buds before the snow is gone. The signs of spring coming will arrive before any seeming change in the weather. The same goes with the sun above us. The days will start to get longer in just a few weeks. Spring is coming. Christ is coming. The world passes away. But Jesus' words will never pass away. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, make us watchful and heedful in awaiting the coming of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, that when he stands at the door and knocks, he may find us not sleeping in carelessness and sin, but awake and rejoicing in his appearance. Through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray the prayer Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
My Savior Lives Northland is pleased to announce that we will be broadcasting every Saturday morning at 9.30 a.m. and every Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m. just as you're used to on My9. Please check your local listings to see where you can find this wonderful locally produced worship program recorded just for you. If you would like to sponsor a program of My Savior Lives Northland, whether in memory of, in recognition of, as a church or an individual, go to our website, mslnorthland.com. Click the sponsorship tab, fill out the form, send it, and then pay for it on PayPal. If you don't like to do it electronically, write or call Mount Olive. They'll send you a form and then you can send a check. I want to thank you right now for helping us bring Christ to the Northland. Thank you for joining us in worship today. If you would like more information about a church in your area, or if this program has been a blessing to you, please send comments and contributions to MSL Northland, CO Mount Olive Lutheran Church, 2012 East Superior Street, Duluth, Minnesota, 55812. We appreciate your support and prayers for this ministry. My Savior Lives Northland is a production of Stokes Media House in conjunction with the Wisconsin and Minnesota North Districts of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod and supported by viewers like you.